I never expected Untitled Goose Game to be the game that it is. An emotional, joyful, and at times truly sorrowful tale about a goose, and I'm just messing with you. This is literally a puzzle game about being an asshole goose, and it's a ton of fun. There isn't much of a story here outside of that you're a goose, a real jerk, and you like messing with people. Honestly, you don't really need a story for it because this is just a damn great time. Untitled Goose Game is broken up into five terrains or sandbox areas. Each of these sections have a to-do list and things to accomplish usually by ruining someone's day. They're laid out as challenge puzzles that don't necessarily care about how you get them done, just that you get them done. I love that approach to the puzzle design because it didn't confine me to follow a simple route, but truly just be creative with the environment. For example, I at one point had to get the gardener wet. I could have easily just turned on the sprinklers while he was nearby, steal his keys and then make him chase me into a lake, or I could have just knocked over a water can on him. There are so many options and if I keep on playing, I'm sure I'll only find more. As for controlling the goose, the amount of action available is pretty simple, but you might need some time to get used to the controls. I know I did. The goose can run, flap its wings, bend down to grab things, and make a honking sound. It's these small handful of actions that make up the recipe for a disaster waiting to happen. Despite there not being a lot for the goose to physically do, the controls do take some time to get used to because you'll constantly have to switch between them. You see, Untitled Goose game is really more like Metal Goose Solid. It's a stealth game to some extent where you want to mess with humans but probably not get caught so you don't get your work undone. This often means you have to quickly juggle grabbing something to distract the human, then running away to grab the actual item objective that you need. If the human catches you, then they'll undo your work and well, I really want to drag this one rake into the lake. Luckily though, getting caught just means you have to try again, you're not thrown back to a checkpoint or anything of that nature. Upon completing most of the items on your given checklist, new areas will begin to open up, expanding the play area with another section. If you ever get stumped on a puzzle, you can move on to the next area and come back to it later. However, I never felt too stumped by any one challenge. Ultimately, it only took me slightly over an hour to complete the entire game, and that's probably one of my only major drawbacks outside of the controls. This game is incredibly short, and while that's not always a bad thing, look at Journey, Florence, or Sayonara Wild Hearts for example, I feel like Untitled Goose Game could have done more. Perhaps it's just because of how approachable the gameplay feels, but I'd love to see this goose in many other areas or scenarios. Disrupting a protest, entering a kid's birthday party, Naruto running across Area 51, the possibilities are endless. Untitled Goose Game is no doubt a great game, but even deeper than that, I think it's a fantastic design formula. One that can be infinitely applied to any scenario with some sort of fun to be had with it. Never have I had this much fun just giving a kid the wrong pair of glasses only to scare him afterward and then have him trip. Yeah, I kind of feel bad, but it's pretty funny. Untitled Goose Game isn't an intensive looking game. It's simple in its design with a mostly flat color layout that has that typical Made in Unity engine look. I like it, it sort of reminds me of the tutorial comics in a Portal game. The humans during gameplay have this chibiest look to them that only makes messing with them all the more cute and funny. The simplistic art style also meant that the visuals look bright and crisp on the Switch, regardless of whether I was playing in dock or portable mode. I never had any performance issues and in fact, because of the short length, I actually found myself gravitating more towards the underpowered portable mode for this one. When it comes to audio, Untitled Goose Game is a selectively quiet game. For most of the time, you won't actually hear any music. General gameplay just has the sounds of your actions, whether it's the little pitter-patter of your feet, you scaring the crap out of a little kid with your honk, or the sound of the radio being played. It's usually only in scenarios where you first begin to mess with a new area that a little piano tune will play to introduce the action. It's subtle, but I like the choice to not overstay its welcome. Untitled Goose Game is simple in every factor of its gameplay, visuals, sound, and it uses that to its advantage. By the end of it, Untitled Goose Game just left me wanting more, and that's both a great and slightly disappointing thing. Hopefully more levels or areas get added later on, but for the time being, I'm having a blast. I'll just keep on messing with humans and showing my friends the joy of being a really messed up goose.